First of all, I would like to thank the foundation, Mr. Gurg and Mr. Ajdan for having given me an opportunity of sharing my thoughts with you this evening and attend this valedictory function. I would certainly like to congratulate all the award winners for the contribution that they have made. I would further compliment this foundation and the entire organization and the co-sponsors of this conference for the purpose that, you know, the fundamental principle of today is you may live nationally, but you need to think universally. If you cannot think universally, you can't live nationally as well in peaceful. Therefore, I especially feel very nice with all the foreign delegates and speakers who have present, participated, and who have shared their views, technologies, and various ideas for betterment of the human being or the human race as such. Today, we cannot talk in segments of environment. We have to work together because as our ancient people always said that globe is a family. India never considered and it was treated that the globe is one big family and you have to protect each part of it. That is how you see if Atlantic is affected, the Himalayans are affected. The Himalayans are affected, the deserts are affected. If you talk of air, don't think Delhi air is bad and that's going to be end of it. No, it's going to travel. It's very nice to see that we are taking a very major step with regard to coal and fossil fuels to imagine a life without energy in every part of your living is today an impossibility energy is essential therefore its production is essential if its production is essential we have to ensure that while we are having the sources the full industry growing day by day for generation of energy that it does not cause environmental damage, particularly the damage which is irreversible. Once we hit the natural resources to the extent of irreversibility, then the possibility of our getting hit back is very prominent and that's what you see in various parts of the world today including some part states of our own country. Now today we will just like to give a hint to you with regard to the judicial participation or the judicial contribution in regard to coal and fossil fuel directions. There were cases and cases arise, and as you know, the two things about coal were the quality of coal that was being used, particularly in the thermal sector, as well as otherwise a regular source of energy for industrial manufacturing processes in our country. The quality of control caused so much of concern that the National Green Tribunal and the Supreme Court of India had to intervene. And there was a time when there were orders were passed for shutting down the thermal plants. There were orders passed for shutting down the industrial sector. And if you recollect, in the case of Taj, there were specific directions issued that within three kilometers, there shall be no industry using the fossil fuels. Because they had the impact not only on the human life, but they also had effect on our valuable assets of the country. The other cases were, if you see, the glass industry. Major part of the glass industry in India was using fossil fuels, coal, or other sources which were very highly polluting. 
Now they were shut down. They gradually shifted either to CNG or other sources of uh, gases by which they could carry on their business. Therefore, the contribution of the judiciary has been very positive in the field of environment and more particularly in the case of consumption and utilization of fossil fuels and coal particularly. And there has been a definite improvement. The sectors, even the government now is thinking how to handle the thermal energy, which is the main source is coal. So these are the contributions which have been made and we have to, as Mr. Adan said, that you have to have a common thinking. It's not the various, you have the regulatory agency, you have industry, you have the final, the end product for whom is made is the user. So if we are talking of reducing generic, uh, energy for the purposes of day-to-day -day consumption in various parts of our living, then you have to take that economic benefit does not frustrate the environmental concepts. You must adopt technologies which would help tomorrow. They do not, I don't mean that the industry must shut down itself or the industry must have economic losses all the time. No, there has to be, that's why the doctrine of sustainable development was carried out into the industrial concept as well. So when we talk of industrial growth, it has to be sustainable. So when we talk of, you will have to take into consideration the end user, the industry's benefit, the production, the utility, and the economic principles. And I'm very happy to see that one of the recommendations made in the charter that your declaration you have prepared is that there should be special economic benefits or incentives for providing a clean energy or for establishing the sources for supply of clean energy. I think it's a very positive way of thinking and this should go across the world and not here. So I think it's a great thought process. Well, the one fundamental principle which was often argued even if when I was speaking at the United Nations, at the UNEP, one common thought which everybody came that there has to be 3C principle. 3C principle is you should have a coordinated concerted and collective effort. Now this would apply across. When we talk of a country, that means regulatory authorities, the government, the agencies, the consumers, and the citizens must get together. If we talk of world, the countries should get together and aim only on one thing, to provide clean environment. If we can talk of clean environment because whether you live in a seven-storied building or you live in any big house in any part of the world, three things you definitely need. One is clean air, clean water, and clean environment to live. Even if you get down out of a Mercedes car, you will still need air to breathe. So therefore, the effort has to be whichever part of the world you go, you should be able to get these three things as on sustainability principles. So therefore, I would request that the, all the people from parts of the world who have come here, we should adopt mutually. There should be a concept of mutuality then, rather than exclusiveness. We should not try to make buck on exclusive technology improvements. We should rather work on collective adoption of technologies for the benefit of the humanity and the environment because they are inseparable, they cannot be segregated at any cost. And I would uh, be quite uh, happy to say that the effort all of you have put together for the last three days has resulted into pinpointing certain 
constructive suggestions which must be adopted. And I do definitely vouch for the thought that has been expressed that we should have young generation attending these kind of conferences on all spheres because it is their young minds, if they become environmentally conscious, then it is but natural that the improvement in the technological, economical, social, and political fronts would be very high. It will be definitely aimed much higher than what the people of the elderly age are supposed to do. I would just share one experience which I had, which why should the young people be there? And from that date till today, I have never declined an invitation where the students are attending the conference. <laughs> and that was in the year 19, uh, I think 2016. I had organized a conference on environment, global environment, and uh, there were around about 82 countries participating in that conference where I think the chief justices of all those countries, the ministers, the bureaucrats, all were present. And to my good luck, I think it was 15 or 16, if I don't mistake, it was in Vigyan Bhavan. And the best part of it was that Dr. Abdul Kalam was the chief guest for that conference. So when he gave his inaugural speech, so he told me, he says, Judge, can I change your program? I said, well, Your Excellency, what you want is the law of the country. So you do what you think you should. So he told me that I have learned that this conference is being attended by students. I said, yes. So he said, how many students are there? So I told him there are 450 students, and we had around about 1,700 delegates all over the world from. He said, OK. So he gave his speech. After giving his speech, he gave 10 commandment oath. And he asked the students who were sitting in the balcony of the Vigyan Bhavan to rise. And he gave them 10 commandment oath, which included everything, nation, parents, state, your obligations. And in the end, it was three for environment. So after that, the function got over. So we were having a cup of tea together. So he said, uh, Judge, would you like to know why did I do this? I said, Your Excellency, it will be my privilege if you can tell me why did you do this. He says, look, you, me, and all of us, and all these big people sitting in the VIP rows of 30 have practically lived their lives. They are not going to change. They have rigid minds. They believe that what they think is correct. He says, but this is the generation. If this generation captures even one point out of the Ten Commandments oath I have given them today, even one on environment, I have served my country for a coming hundred years. And that's what I think we all should do, that we should serve and involve this young generation so that they don't only carry the thought, the knowledge they receive, but they become innovative and develop the country in a way that anybody can be proud of it. You know, we are today just now, one of the speakers was very emphatic on mentioning the cow dung clubs to be used, you know, as a biogas. Now, if you just look back, not long, I was a kid going to school. I used to go to my village in Punjab, and this was being used as the gas. This used to be the main source of energy in villages, and strangely, if you can, please go to a restaurant if they can cook food for you. Let them cook a food on the cow dung gas. You will found the food to be delicious. So that was our heritage. So we need the biogas systems were known to us. It is not something very unique being come. Therefore, I'm sure with all of you, the big brains here, the high techno brains here, and all the great people who have come from abroad to share their ideas with you, I wish this a great success and you will 
have the next year conference a step ahead than what you have today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.